My name is Lisa, a part-time working housewife. I live with my husband Bram and our two children, daughter Madison and son Thomas. Oh, I was planning to eat that fried chicken. Really? I thought you didn't want it anymore because it's been left out for a while. I like to save my favorite things to eat last, like... All right, all right, no fighting. I've made some pudding for dessert. What? Yes. I love the pudding you make, Mom. Dinner time is very lively when both kids are present. Today, they are arguing over the last piece of fried chicken on the large serving plate. They've grown up so fast, it's hard to believe they're already in middle school. Even though they argue, they both smile when I mention the pudding I've prepared for dessert. Meanwhile, regarding Bram. You always work so late, thank you for your hard work. Ah, yeah. Today was later than usual. How about dinner? We have curry today, can you eat? No, I ate outside since it got late. I see. You've been eating at home less frequently lately. When it gets late, I get hungry, and it's quicker to eat out than to come home. But, I'm a bit worried about your health. Eating out all the time isn't good, is it? Ah, right. I'll try to be more mindful. Well, I'm off to bed. I have to get up early tomorrow. Okay, good night. I pride myself on my cooking skills and enjoy planning meals that are healthy for my family. I always consider nutrition and calories when preparing our daily meals, ensuring they are delicious as well. Despite this, I've noticed that Bram has been gaining weight recently. I was puzzled and concerned about the cause until one day while shopping. Oh, isn't that Noah? Lisa, hello. Hello. Bram is always saying how grateful he is for your help. Oh, no. I'm the one who's thankful for all he does. Are you shopping? Yes, the soy sauce is on sale today. You too? I came specifically for the soy sauce after seeing the ad. Oh, by the way, Noah, can I ask you something? Yes, of course, if I can answer it. It's about Bram. He seems to have been gaining weight recently. I make sure his meals, including the packed lunches, are nutritious and tasty. Do you know anything about this? The meals. I actually, you see. At the supermarket, I happened to meet Bram's colleague, Noah. I took the chance to ask about Bram's recent weight gain. Noah hesitated but finally shared something shocking. That night, I waited for Bram to come home. Welcome home, Bram. Ah, I'm back. You must be tired from today as well. Hey, how was your lunchbox? It had tamagoyki and hamburger steak, right? I was really confident about those, Madison and Thomas also said they were delicious. Yeah, it was good. Was it really good? Truly? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? But I didn't put tamagoyki or hamburger steak in your lunchbox today. Also, I heard from your colleague that you've been eating junk food for lunch. I've been wondering if that's why you've been gaining weight recently. Hey, isn't that like putting me to the test? I was just worried about you. So, you think it's okay to do anything because you're worried? That's a nasty way of thinking. Wait, that's not what I meant. Besides, your lunches are boring, the same thing every day. I don't need that stuff anymore, don't bother making it from tomorrow on. Bram, angry at my questioning, went to his room without responding. I acknowledged that it wasn't right to test him that way. However, I was genuinely concerned about his health since he didn't explain his sudden weight gain. After that day, Bram stopped speaking to our family. Good morning, Mom, Dad. Good morning, Thomas. Breakfast is ready. Thanks, let's eat. Oh right, hey Dad, a letter for you arrived yesterday. I left it on the table. Did you see it? Dad. Thank you, Thomas. Bram, it's terrible not to respond. Yeah, and you're always on your phone. You didn't even look at me when I said hello earlier. Right. Hey, don't make the kids worry. Breakfast is ready, let's eat. Hey mom, this salmon full bake is delicious. Yeah, it's a feast for breakfast. Thank you. Come on, Bram, it will get cold if you don't eat now. You have work today, and they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Ugh. You'll be late for work if you don't hurry. Dad, what's this? Dad, is this what I think it is? Hey, how could you do this in front of the kids? Dad's gone. Mom, are you okay? Bram nonchalantly placed the divorce papers on the breakfast table, already filled out in his section. 
He left the house without saying a word. Fed up with his attitude, I decided to take drastic action. A week later, Bram called. Hello? Hey. What's the meaning of this? What do you mean, calling and yelling at me like this? What do I mean? That should be my line. I can't get into the house. What did you do? Oh, are you talking about the house we used to live in? If so, I sold it. The move is complete, and your belongings have been sent to your office. What? You sold it? Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. It's true. As proof, there isn't a single piece of furniture inside the house you can see from the window. It's true. What about all the stuff? Didn't you hear? I moved. The furniture was all mine, and your personal items have been sent to your office. Enough! What are you trying to do? Well, the house was in my name, so I can do what I want with it, can't I? Stop joking around! Come to this house right now! Bram, agitated by our conversation, shouted in anger and abruptly hung up the phone. I didn't need to respond to his summons, but he seemed likely to call back in a frenzy. Reluctantly, I went to meet him at the house I had sold. Hey! You're late! How could you sell the house while I was away? How could you make such a unilateral decision? We're married, shouldn't we consult each other on such important matters? Consult? Did you just say we should consult now? Of course! It's our house. Do you think this kind of behavior is acceptable? Hold on, who stopped talking to whom first? Even if I wanted to consult, you wouldn't even speak to me. You ignored everything I said. How was I supposed to consult with you? That's a different matter. Different, really? You expect me to believe that someone who wouldn't talk to me about everyday things would suddenly be open to discussing important matters? Don't joke with me, do you think I would come up with such a thing after being ignored every day? Despite it being our first meeting in a while, Bram immediately started grilling me. His talkativeness was a stark contrast to his recent silence. I was at my limit with his one-sided rants, just voicing his own complaints without considering my perspective. I question your common sense. It's unbelievable that you would silently sell the house and disappear. Enough already. It's always complaints and grievances with you. No matter how hard I try, you never acknowledge it. I'm fed up. That's my line. What have you worked hard on? Who was it that only made bland meals in the name of health? I'm always being told to take care of my health, to watch out for this and that. Ever thought about how it feels to be constantly nagged? Bram, you felt that way? My concern was just a nuisance to you. Bram's tirade was a complete dismissal of all the care I had put into our meals. I always believed that cooking with love and attention to nutrition and ingredients was my way of protecting my family's health. Yet, Bram told me that all my efforts were nothing but an annoyance to him. I was deeply hurt and couldn't hide my shock. You're going too far. I have foods I like and foods I don't like too. But you always force me to eat what you think is healthy or pack it in my lunch. I was fed up. Then you should have said something. Going silent all of a sudden, who's the cruel one here? And to behave like that in front of the kids, you're failing as a father. You're the one who's pushy. You need to rethink your approach. Mun's cooking is the best in the world. Madison? And we shouldn't waste food. That's right. I used to hate carrots, but I started to like them because mom made them in a way I could enjoy. You know carrots are good for health, don't you? Thomas too. Madison and Thomas rose to my defense against Bram's aggressive tirade, expressing their gratitude for my cooking. Madison declared my dishes the best in the world, while Thomas credited his newfound appreciation for carrots to my culinary efforts. Their kindness was profoundly moving. But bad food is bad. Your lunches aren't worth eating. That's too much. Mom's cooking isn't bad at all. I eat it every day, so I'm certain it's good. Right? And if you don't like something, you should just say it. Then mom would find a way to make it more palatable. Exactly. You have no right to criticize mom when you haven't said anything. Both of you. Ha. Huh. You two don't know. Mom is so health conscious that the lunch sides are tasteless. There's no zing, no punch. Fried potatoes are a thousand times better. That's not true. I've always tried to balance it by including things you like. Ha. Huh. As if. Those lunches were inedible. Pram, you say that, but you are giving those lunches to one of the girls at work, right? 
and claiming you made them yourself. Cooking is trendy for guys these days. Noah, why would you say that? And why are you even here? Bram was genuinely shocked by Noah's sudden revelation, and I was just as surprised. Noah disclosed that Bram had been giving away the lunches I prepared, claiming he made them himself, presumably to curry favor or impress a female subordinate. I was utterly confused. Noah, what do you mean by that? Exactly as I said. Bram has been passing off the lunches you made as his own and giving them to a female subordinate, probably to ingratiate himself with them or to appear in a better light. That's outrageous. I actually received complaints from the subordinates about being persistently approached by him. They find it hard to refuse because he's their boss. I came here today to talk about it. Bram, is this true? The subordinates are troubled. They asked me to do something because he's been so insistent. Such behavior really needs to stop. No, that's not true. I was just trying to build good relations with my subordinates. There was no ulterior motive. Is that so? But still, it's wrong to claim your wife's lunches is your own. And it's a shame to resort to junk food as a substitute for the nutritious lunches being provided. Why would no one know about this? I'm your colleague. It's not hard to see. It's a waste, especially when your wife is making such healthy and delicious lunches. And if you're not even eating them, you have no right to call them bad. So, that's why you suddenly started gaining weight. Thanks to Noah, everything became clear. Bram's sudden weight gain was due to his daily indulgence in junk food, as he hadn't even touched the lunches I prepared. Instead, he disparaged them as tasteless or bad to cover up his deceit. Filled with renewed anger, I confronted him. Someone who can't manage their own health certainly can't handle work or parenting. What did you say? It's true. If you can't understand others' feelings, it will impact your work, and you're obviously incapable of parenting. And what? You think you can handle work and parenting all by yourself? What can a part-timer like you do? You don't know. Mom doesn't just work part-time. What do you mean? Have you forgotten how good and passionate she is about cooking? She's well known in the culinary world now. Ha. Huh. A skilled housewife famous for cooking? Don't make me laugh. I collaborate with major companies, developing products that everyone loves. It's rewarding. That's the fun part of cooking. By the way, I do get paid, and it's about five times more than you make. All right. I saw the collaboration products at the supermarket. Delicious sweets conceived by a cooking-savvy housewife. I love sweets, so I bought some, and they're incredibly tasty. I keep going back for more. Well, thank you. Collaborating with major companies? I can't believe it. How dare you talk down to mom without knowing anything about her? Right, it's unfair to mom. How can you speak to your father like that? Father, do we even have one, right, mom? Indeed. I filed the divorce papers you left behind, so Madison, you don't have a father anymore. That means I don't have one either, right? Are you mocking me? Bram was shocked to learn about my income beyond part-time work and seemed incredulous that I could raise Madison and Thomas alone. He became agitated and raised his voice even at the kids. I stepped in between Bram and the children. Stop yelling at the kids. Besides, that divorce petition was what you wanted, Bram. I just agreed to it. That was just a threat. I never thought you'd actually go through with it. Too bad. I took you seriously. And I can't stay with someone who uses such threats, especially in front of our children. Forget it. Let's get back together. I'll eat your healthy food from now on, so start cooking for me again. Take care of my health again. I can't look good in front of my subordinates with this body. What are you talking about? I thought you said my cooking was tasteless and bad. I'm fine without having to cook for you. Exactly. If you want to fix your physique, you should exercise. We shouldn't waste mom's cooking on someone who doesn't appreciate it. You've made your bed. Now lie in it. Reflect why you shed all that accumulated fat. When we turned our backs on him, Bram began to shout, but his display elicited no sympathy from us. We left him to his ranting about reconciliation. Eventually, Bram found himself alone, struggling with daily tasks he had always relied on me for. His hygiene deteriorated due to his inability to keep up with chores like laundry, and he gained more weight from constantly eating out since he couldn't cook for himself. His health worsened, leading to frequent hospital visits. His professional reputation suffered, resulting in a demotion, and the issues with his female subordinates isolated him further. 
separated from us and demoted at work, Bram led a lonely life, burdened by his poor health. Meanwhile, Noah, welcome. Hey, thanks for inviting me, Lisa. Here's a little something for you. Oh, thank you. Come on in. Noah's here, we've been waiting for you. We can start the party without Noah, hurry up. Sorry for the delay. Now, let's get this party started. Yes, Mom, let's eat. I'm starving. All right, Thomas. Let's all eat together then. Yes, let's eat. Let's eat. We decided to host a home party today. I began the preparations last night and got into it early this morning. I love cooking, so preparing was a joy. Madison and Thomas helped out, and I even managed to test some recipes for an upcoming collaboration. Everyone, Madison, Thomas, and Noah, seemed to enjoy the variety of dishes laid out on the table. Making people happy with my cooking brings me immense joy. I look forward to continuing to create enjoyable and happy moments for everyone. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.